Um, it's been uh, an interesting day and hopefully uh, valuable for y'all. Some of the discussion here reminds me of, uh, I mean, we're obviously, this is a policy discussion. Of course, the title of the conference was uh, Criminalization of Corporate Conduct. It's gone through a number of uh, iterations over the years. We've had a number of programs dealing with these issues. We had one that was entitled Overcriminalization. Uh, we had a panel entitled Overcriminalization. There was a question mark there. These are policy questions that we're, we're, uh, we're dealing with here. I can't help but relay to you uh, a comment I uh, heard years ago uh, when the Sentencing Commission was coming out with its recommendations, its organizational guidelines. And, uh, and a friend of mine said, uh, who was on the staff, explained to me it was, a, it was a perfect storm, Henry. I said, what are you talking about? Well, we had anti-business liberals combining with pro-law enforcement conservatives. And, and they came together. And that's what he, his view of what happened with the sentencing guidelines was an unusual mix. No one is uh, uh, putting a break on either person's side of the equation, and, and we, we got to that point. And some people, I think, feel that the sentencing guidelines are at the root of some of the issues that we've we've talked about here. Uh, a couple of the judges at the end of the, not this prior session, but the one before raised the question about the, uh, the question of balance, and I, I appreciate the fact that they raised that, and I, I wanted to kind of respond to that to some extent by, uh, by basically asserting a positive statement, which I'm pretty sure is correct, and that is a lot more of our activities are subject to criminal sanctions now than, than ever before. Uh, and Part of that has been conscious policy decisions. Part of it has just been when a law is passed, let's throw some criminal sanctions in to show, so, show that we're serious. But we rarely decriminalize activity. Uh, so it's just an onward march, it seems, that we have. And you can certainly spend time talking about the, the positive, the correctness of that positive statement. I'm pretty, pretty confident that I'm correct about that. Then there's the normative question of whether, well, do we, have we criminalized enough activity? Perhaps we should criminalize more. And that's when we had the, the panel on over-criminalization with the question mark. And that relates to, to a couple questions that can be, can be brought up with this. And I think that perhaps some of the questions were related to the question of, of when some people are trying to describe how things go on, uh, they're not necessarily trying to demonize U.S. Uh, attorneys in terms of their their actions. They're just saying, look, this is the toolkit that they have. The, uh, the hammer and nail analogy was uh, one that was used um, to deal with that. But it's a question of, you know, what are the consequences of the degree of cr criminalization we have? Um, I think it's a fair statement that you take every large industrial company in the United States and they are violating at, at, at just about any time some provision that could result in a criminal uh, violation. Um, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I'm not sure. Now, a question can be raised about the balance of the makeup of the panels, and, and do we have enough people here that are representing the, uh, the uh, prosecutor's perspective? And, and I certainly could, can plead uh, guilty uh, to that, uh, that cues here, uh, accusation. On the other hand, I have to explain to you that we've had difficulty in the past getting the U.S. Uh, uh, attorneys uh, to participate in these programs. Uh, we have had, uh, in the past, we've had Paul McNulty participate in programs. And uh, uh, while he was the uh, U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, before he moved into the uh, um, what deputy position he had, the deputy criminal enforcement, whatever that title was, um, Associate uh, Attorney General for uh, Criminal prosecutions where, where he did the McNulty memo. But McNulty flat out denied that the type of abuses that have been described uh, are taking place, and at which point the general counsel of Raman Haas, who was on there, gave several examples of his company being subjected to uh, some of the type of, uh, of activities. And so, you know, there, there are prosecutors that may see what's going on in their, their um, areas and some that may not see it. Um, as judges, you, uh, obviously there's this transparency question that's been raised as to how much prosecutorial uh, actions of the type that are being discussed here actually end up in front of you. I mean, these are pre-indictment uh, type of situation, pre-charging of, of crimes where we have the deferred prosecution agreements, so it may not actually, um, actually show up there. Um, we've also had uh, Mary Beth Buchanan, who was the 
uh, U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania, but uh, Director of the Executive Office of the U.S. Attorneys, uh, come to our programs. Uh, she's uh, participated in two of our programs. Uh, there's zero chance that she would ever come back because you, the judges, beat her up so bad when she came to these things. So um, we, we try to do this balance. That with a transition in administrations, obviously it's a little bit difficult to know a few months out who we could, could get to come here and fill some of the slots on this. As surrogates, we took on people uh, like Alice Fisher and people who were recently uh, prosecutors to come here and present those views. Um, Obviously, once you leave that uh, position, uh, you know, you're on the other side of the, the street and you, you make a living a different way, so perhaps uh, that helps bring out some of the points that were made. Um, I do think Roscoe's position uh, about the uh, pol impacts of politics was an interesting one. It's just he, I don't think he was saying it's necessarily a bad thing. He's saying, look, this is just the reality of how he ran his office. Um, I really would have loved to have had Patrick Fitzgerald, the, the uh, U.S. At attorney for the Northern District of uh, Illinois, to be here, but he's been very busy with other things. Uh, and he's not my favorite Pat Patrick Fitzgerald. The, my favorite Patrick Fitzgerald is the coach of the Northwestern Wildcats, which went 9-3 and three last year. So that's what Rizzoli, who I'd really like to have here. But I wanted to kind of touch on these issues. We've taken great pride over the years in, in the balance of our programs that we've put together. I think institutionally this is a little bit more difficult one to, uh, to put together. Uh, we've asked uh, the, the folks when they come here to try to, and, you know, some of them have much more explicitly normative uh, positions than others do. Um, but, you know, we've reached out to people like uh, Julia Sullivan, who we just had on here, uh, and other folks to try to give us uh, a uh, variety of perspectives on this. Um, I'm sure you'll have other opportunities to hear other viewpoints on this, so uh, we've got it built in, hopefully something that you'll find valuable. Um, we're going to now spend our last session talking about uh, criminal, cri corporate crime and the current uh, financial crisis, and uh, we have, a, have an interesting lineup put together here for you, which I think you'll find uh, enjoyable with uh, some different perspectives. Uh, the first uh, speaker is going to be Larry Ribstein, who's a professor at the University of Illinois. Uh, Larry is uh, the most uh, productive scholar who I, that I know, and I've um, uh, had the pleasure of uh, occasionally when he's got other interesting topics, he'll agree to be my co-author to work with him, but he works on a lot of very sexy things as well. Uh, very, Larry's got a book coming out uh, now entitled uh, The Uncorporation to talk about how uh, the theme of which deals with um, that the corporate form of organization is, uh, is not the, the, most, the, the best way, the optimal way for many businesses to organize their activities. But Larry also has a blog called Idio, Idio Blog, I don't never, which is, he's very active on, and he raises a lot of issues about criminalization of corporate conduct and uh, prosecutorial behavior there. He's going to start off with that. Then we're going to have, uh, Ellen's going to speak again. Then we have Steve Presser from our faculty here at Northwestern who's going to offer his uh, views on, on the crime and the, and the financial crisis. Uh, Steve uh, is a very popular teacher here in the law school and uh, teaches a corporations class, which I've had the pleasure of using his, his book in. And uh, then John Baker will finish it up, and hopefully we'll have some time for some Q&A at the end of that. So please welcome our panelists, and then we'll turn it over to Larry.